My neighbors went insane. Now they knock on my door every night. I won't let them in. There's a village in the woods near my house. No one talks about it. It's stricken from all maps, but it's still there. Something still lives there. It used to be my home. My family and friends lived there. I left them there. On cold days, when the knocking on my door is quiet, I think about them. I think about my childhood. I think about my friends. When I was young, we used to tell each other stories of what lived in the forest. Ghosts, ghouls and demons. The worst was the dogman. My big sister told me the dogman was an old man who lived in the woods. A birth deformity twisted his face into a dog's. He walked through the trees naked on all fours. She told me he ate eyes. My best friend Lai told me not to listen to her. The dogman was just a story. Even so, dogman was not a human. He was a forest demon. The demons who lived in the forest couldn't hurt us. They couldn't even touch us. He was right. What they could do was so much worse. The horror started with the murders. We heard about the first incident from our neighbors. A local butcher came out of his house covered in blood and giggling. He had brutally murdered his entire family. He ate their eyes. They locked him in the village jailhouse until officers from the city could take him to court. The jailhouse was close to our home. I heard him laughing from my bedroom window. More and more events across the village. The tailor wandered the streets wearing human skin. An old woman sewed the eyes of her grandsons shut. They were all locked together in the jailhouse. They laughed all the time, turning it more into a madhouse. They kept me up at night, listening to their insane words. But one night, I went to a deep sleep. I dreamt of a little girl. She was wearing a white dress and collecting flowers on the ground. I couldn't see her face. She spoke to me. Everyone in this village will die. I had heard of dream spirits before. Ghosts who would visit you in your dreams and give you almonds. Was this a spirit trying to warn me? Leave this village. Leave and never come back. She put the flower down and turned to face me. She had no eyes. He is in the house. I woke up in cold sweat. Someone was in the room with me. I could see my mother's silhouette in the gas lamp's light from the hallway. There was something in her hand. Mom, come here Ling. She beckoned with her other hand. Mom, what are you? Ling, please come here. The light flickered onto the object. It was my sister's head. What? What did you? She lunged at me. Come here Ling. Her hands wrapped around my neck and tightened. Give me your eyes, give them eyes, give them eyes, give them eyes. As my vision blurred, I reached up and dug my fingers into her eyes. She let a scream as blood squirted out. Her hands let go. I pushed her body aside and ran for the door. As I reached for the lock, I looked inside. She was standing dead still, staring at me with those bloody eyes. Come here. A voice completely unlike my mom cows out from the dark. I slammed the door shut. The sounds of wild scratching and banging came from the other side as I locked it. I started to search the house for my dad. My sister's headless body was in the living room. I found my dad in front of the back door, lying on the floor. The knife she used to cut out his eyes beside him. I walked out of my house looking for my neighbor, for the police, for any adult. Anyone to help me. I should have stayed inside. Outside, I saw my neighbor skinning his son's body in front of his house. His head jerked in my direction. Who's there? I can smell you. I ducked behind the trees. He stared in my direction for a while, before returning to his work. I'll get you later. I crawled into the bushes and started to sneak my way through the village. The shrubbery covered much of the village, but the only way out to help was the village entrance. I wasn't the only one heading there. There was a mass of villagers. The butcher, the tailor, the police, Lai's parents. Almost everyone was walking to the entrance. I followed behind, hiding myself in the foliage. Near the village entrance, they stopped. They massed around the gate, not going outside. It was dark outside the gate. From the dark, dog eyes watched them. A vile voice called out. I am hungry. Children, bring me children. Cut them into pieces and throw them into the dark. They took my friends. Lai's body was tossed first. I closed my eyes. The sounds came anyway. The severing of flesh and bones. The crunching of teeth. Inhumanly cruel laughter. When I opened them again, the sun's rays lit my face. I had passed out. My first thought was a horrible nightmare and I wanted to rush home. Then I saw the bodies. The ground was stained a dark red. Flies and rats converged on a pile of torn flesh. I saw a child's skull picked clean. I saw Lai's blue eyes peeking from the rubble. A crow came in and snatched it. I ran out of the gate. Neighboring village was good distance away, and by the time I arrived, my throat was parched. All I could spit out was the word demon. Demon. Two fishermen saw me on the edge of the woods and took me to some water. After I rested, I was taken to the shaman. In the village center I told him about the monster and how it spread madness. The village shaman, a war veteran, was solemn when he heard my story. He told me to wait outside. Hours later, he gave his judgment before the whole village. The forest demons cannot touch living human flesh. So it makes puppets. To stop the spread of the madness, we must destroy all puppets. So he gave his orders. No one was to live. As night fell, they started a fire close to the village. They barricaded the paths around the entrance. With butcher knives and old rifles, they waited by the village entrance. But nobody ever came out. Even as the fire spread and crawled onto the roofs, no one came out. Even as houses burned to the ground and the smell of rotting flesh filled the air, no one came out. No screams, only the sound of something chuckling in the dark. It got closer and closer, till the men swore it was coming right in front of them. Just before dawn, it turned into a chilling laughter before going silent. The shaman was disturbed, but he was sure of the ritual. He performed a ceremony the next morning and declared the village cleansed. That was almost 50 years ago. My country has advanced a lot since. The fishing village is dead, its children all having moved on. 
I've grown old too. In my old age, I wanted to see my home. So last year, I went to visit the village. I did not expect to see the burned ashes of my home. I was realistic. The trees would consume my world in its whole. That is not what I saw. When I came to the village, I saw the village untouched. I saw the small houses where I lived. I saw the old trees unburned. I saw the people who lived there. The dog-headed people. I saw the butcher with his snarled face. I saw the tailor with her morped jaw. I saw Lai with those warped eyes. This did not feel like home. Something had taken over entirely. Something did not want me here. I hid myself in bushes, just like I did in my youth and sneaked my through back to my car. I pushed on the gas and barreled down the road. It was late and night was falling. The shock had drained me, sleep was gnawing at me, not completely out of the village grounds, I fell asleep on the side of the road. For the first time in half a center, I dreamed of her again, of her white dress, of the flowers, of the empty holes where her eyes should have been, of her nails digging into the flesh of my shoulders, her mouth distorting into a scream. I told you never to come back. My eyes opened, there were three figures standing in front of the car. When I turned on the lights I saw their faces, my father, mother and sister with their twisted faces. They had no eyes. I put my car in reverse and pushed hard on the gas. Their gazes seemed to follow me as I backed onto the road. The engine roared as I thundered down the road. I saw them come out of the woods. Their decaying bodies just stopped short of the pavement. All through the woods, my whole town were standing by the edge of road, watching me with their eyeless sockets. As I neared the edge of the woods, I heard something behind me, a chuckling from inside the car. For a moment, as lightning lit the car, I saw him in the backseat. His twisted face, his dead stare, his deformed smile was the most disturbing expression I'd seen in my life. Then he was gone. The roads and woods were empty again. I never should have returned. They followed me home. I see my family every day now. I see them in the trees by my house. Late at night, I hear them knocking on my doors. I know they want me to join them. 